Hello, I would like to show you how to draw a process flow diagram. I will be start with a few high level frameworks and then we draw a process flow diagram. The first framework is Archimate, developed by the Telematica Institute in Netherlands and it's based on a layer concept, it's business layer, application layer, technical layer. The next framework is the NATO architecture framework. It provides support for the NNEC, the NATO network enabled capability, and will help us to prevent cost overruns and reduce risk. Another framework is the Open Group Architecture Framework, TOGAF, and it's based on four pillars like a business architecture, application architecture, data architecture, or uh, technical architecture. The DODAF framework is the Department of Defense architecture framework and it has different views organized in four sets like operational view, system view, technical view and so on. And there are many different other standards as well like IDEF standard, event process chain, flow diagram, entity relationship diagram, class diagram, BPMN diagram and it's an endless list of different notation that are existing for process flow or for enterprise architecture at all. So let's focus on drawing a standard flow diagram. I've opened the tool here, you can see on the left hand side is a new object palette, we have some existing objects, we have associations, we have properties and it's all based on a, on a central repository. So we drag and drop our first object which is an, which is an event, a trigger of a process and we give it the name customer send order. As next step we drag and drop then our first organization unit or role on this diagram, we call it sales. Now we drag and drop our process, the process is called record order and we need of course now to connect the event with the process and we're using here this mandatory connector. So that's the first step of our process chain, customer sending order and then we recording it. The next organization unit is uh, our finance department and the finance department will perform the process check credit. And you see I typed the first few letters of check credit in and this functionality is called autocomplete so I can see the existing objects, they're already in the database and actually I can reuse this functionality after I confirm this uh, dialog box here. So that means I've reused my data and this plus symbol shows that there's a process underneath. You can move all these objects, they are nested or you can move them separate. Let's go a ahead with the next few objects. So we draw another organization unit, we call it the warehouse or we draw the process uh, check stock Again, you see this autocomplete, but this time we create a new process. So now we need to connect these objects to complete the process flow. So after record order, we're checking the stock and we check the uh, credit parallel. After the check stock and check credit was performed, we then can actually go ahead and pack our products. So that's our next process step here. The last organization unit is then our transport department and the transport department is actually then delivering the goods. And you see how easy it is to just drag and drop the objects like a normal drawing tool but in the background, you'll see it later, is a real database with a lot, whole lot of data included. So let's complete our different connectors check stock to pick product, pick product to deliver or transport product and we need a result and the result is customer received goods or products. So the last connection here and we can then go ahead and make it a little bit more complex. As you can see at check credit there is a, a logical decision or business rule so either the check credit is okay or not but we need more space so for this we allow this uh, resizing of the, of, the, of the diagram space just by drag and drop this little line here and now we have enough space to draw 
our XOR connector set on the diagram. That's another way of showing this business rule. We then have two decisions or two possibilities. Either if it's not okay this credit check, then we inform our sales manager. So we're using here an internal result which can be used on a different diagram as an internal event so you can actually cross navigate between different diagrams. This time we're using an optional connector. You see a different shape size or the filling and we're adding now the name of like 20% credit check negative or not okay. And if we want to simulate our diagram we also need to add the per percentage split here. Now we can format and move this textual description around. Now we need the other way as well, so we need to connect two pack products. So if the credit check is okay, we can then finally pack our products. Again, this time we have 80% okay and put this in the percentage split as well. So the diagram looks so far okay. One piece is missing, we need an input and connector because the check stock and the check credit flow goes into the pack product. So we need to connect these objects here into an input and. And the input and connector is then going into the pack product. Yeah, so that was pretty much the drawing of a little process flow diagram. Uh, you can see the check credit has some kind of divider, we can see SAP FI. And that's actually the associations in the background. You can see here a lot of association like entities, organization, uh, location, and all these objects can also be visualized as part of a shape or also as a could be part of a graphic and you can create dashboards out of it. But let's drill down to one of these processes like this check credit. You see it's a decomposition and we can see a lower level process flow how this check credit check is actually performed and this process flow can be executed in a workflow environment as well. And you can also see different screens so you com can compare and organize yourself a bit. There's much more, there's not just a diagram, we have also properties. And the properties are in the background in a database, you can see the name, you can add a description, you can also uh, change, convert this to an HTML text, you can import pictures and you can make it quite fancy. So let's just focus on a textual description here. There's some other tabs like frequency or cost. It all is necessary, helps you to improve your process. The throughput here, we can see the service time is one second per process. And we have also then the same properties, of course, behind the organization unit. This time we can change the resources because we have two processes, so we assume we have also two people fulfilling this process. So we can start now our simulation to make sure the diagram is consistent, is okay, and we have no logical errors. We start our simulation, we select the right simulation run, and then we see a lot of tasks running around, indicates how many tasks are performed, how many resources are here in use, and we can also see there's piling up of work, and this piling up of work is so the reason for this is that check stock is doing 20% too much work and that's because of uh, the negative credit check. So what we need to do is actually to change the process flow that the check stock is just doing the 80% of approved processes. We could create a report but for now we just uh, stop the simulation and we optimize our process here. That means we now need to delete this direct connection between record order check stock and we need to reroute the process flow of this 80%. So we can rearrange this quite easily and the process was now or is now optimized. We just need to change now our input and connector set and if we would run the simulation again we would see it's optimized and there are no more uh, piling up of work in between processes. So this shows how easy it is to draw a process flow diagram, to optimize a process flow diagram. And I hope you have enjoyed this presentation. It's now time for a break. Any feedback is more than welcome.